Hi, welcome back. Well, there's no end to this one, I guess. So I'm coming back to this because I started thinking about the pattern that was behind this that um, I didn't see. We all know that there's a pattern of abuse. There's a, um, that pattern of brainwashing that we somehow don't see that just goes unnoticed because it's all we know. It's all we're used to. So there, nothing seems to be out of place. You just... You just go with it. Take it for what it is and, and take it as normal because that is your normal. That's all you know. Pattern with my mother was her constantly patting herself on the back, talking about what a great mom she was. If that's all you know and you hear your, you hear your parent, your whoever it is, you hear this narcissist going, about, going on and on about how great they are, well, you're going to buy into that. She went on and on about how great she was, what great parents they are. She would, you know, lump them in the same batch her and my dad and she was nothing like my dad but she would do that and would always talk about how much they did for us how much they do for us look at all I do for you look at what we do for you look at what we give you my father was very generous he was a very very generous giving man she's not generous generous <laughs> she she likes to think she's generous but everything that she does everything that she ever did has strings attached to it, just like every narcissist we know, just like my ex and all the other narcissists in the world, there are strings attached to everything. She did that, she she could be generous because of the financial situation that he uh, allowed them to be in, and so she was able to pat herself on the back all the time about how much they did for everybody. The minute things didn't go her well, that's all, all that's gonna stop, you know, oh, her and her beloved birthday checks. You know, if you got on her list, well, there goes your birthday check. She just couldn't get enough of herself and her generosity. They made a uh, very nice donation to their church when their brand new church was being built where they used to live. And she never, never missed an opportunity to tell everybody and anybody she could what they donated and what they donated to and how this part of the church was there because of them. And, and my father found that so embarrassing. He found that to be so embarrassing. He was so embarrassed by the, the way she would go on to strangers. She would just meet a stranger in their travels. They'd be on their shuttle or, or at the airport or wherever. And she would just start going on and on to this person about what they had and what they owned and where she came from and where she lived and, you know, how many houses she had. And it he just wanted to crawl under a seat somewhere and hide from the whole thing because he couldn't believe that she could find it in herself to do that. And it was embarrassing to him. She embarrassed him. And she just thought nothing of it. She was, what? What? I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Yeah, right. You're just talking. She needed to do that. She was so, so insecure, is so insecure. She's got to do that. She just has to do that. Growing up, all we heard was about how much she did for us. So, you know, dealing with her on a daily basis and, and having those, those phone calls that would just make the top of my head want to pop off. Just felt like I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to, I got to deal with her. I promised dad I would take care of her. I promised him I would take care of things and did it and did it and did it because I felt that it was my responsibility. I felt that it was a thing to do and oh, well, she's been a good mom. She's been generous. She's been great. And all, I mean, you talk about confusion, you talk about confusion and conflict. Well, I mean, you know what they do. So she started it. You know, she kicked things off. You know, I ended up in that relationship, got out of that relationship, and she tried to step right in, and eventually they got in cahoots and thought they would do it together. Yeah. They set you up for this. They set you up for these relationships because you're just so used to it. You don't know anything else. That was my normal. That was my normal. Dealing with her, dealing with her berating, dealing with her negativity, dealing with her constantly questioning me. And, you know, questioning the decisions that I was making, even though she knew damn well any decisions I was making were going to be exactly what my dad would do. You know, she still wanted to talk down to me and tell me I didn't know what I was doing. She was telling my dad that. And he was, you know, he was like a 100. And, you know, he built and, and amassed a fortune for them and, and left a legacy behind that she ruined. She would talk to him like he was some nobody, like he was just this fool. Not a day went by that she didn't talk down to him. I don't know how he did it. I, I, I just don't know how he, I don't know how he built up a wall to, to not let all of that penetrate. Um, but I think it did. I think it did in the end and it, uh, it added to his decline in health, but, um, that's a story for another day. But 
yeah, not a day went by that she didn't put him down and tell him that he didn't know what he was doing. So that was the pattern, though. That That is what I had bought into. That That's what I bought into, that she was this terrific mom, that they were great parents. They were, they were a, a set of great parents. It wasn't her. It was him. He was behind all that. He was behind the generosity. He was behind looking out for us. You know, a lot of times it was just advice from him you know, that was needed or whatever. She doesn't have any advice. Nobody told you to marry that person. Nobody told you to have kids. Nobody told you to go buy that house. I mean, really? <laughs> That's what you say when somebody calls you with a problem? That's what she would say. Nobody told you. That was her answer for everything. Nobody told you. Okay, well, you know, I guess that's all you have to offer. Then so be it. I mean, you know, my kids would come to me with a problem. I'm like, all right, what is the best possible advice I can give them? So I guess that's the difference between me and her as mothers, to say the least. So that was the pattern. I, I, I had to jump back in and talk about that because looking back on it, you know, I remember going to therapy and, and, and talking to my therapist and saying, this is, this is what happened today. This is what she said. And I'd be a wreck and I'd be, you know, having cried or, or had some kind of fit or, you know, whatever the situation was. And it just, you know, I, I just felt like I had to deal with that. I felt like it was my responsibility to just take it and just put up with it. And it's not up to us to deal with someone else's negativity to try to please them you know if they're toxic and they're negative and they're nasty I don't care who they are gone life's just too short life is way too short it's just something I've come to realize life's too short to deal with negative people there's too much happiness to be had there's too much to experience too much to do too much to appreciate and be grateful for on a daily basis to have somebody come and poop on it <laughs> day in and day out just because they're unhappy whether whether they're unhappy with a situation that they're in or they're unhappy with themselves you know as people which we all know narcissists are you know whatever whatever it is I mean it's one thing to you know help somebody when they're going through a bad time but if it's just a bad life and they're just a bad person and they're negative and they're awful and they're toxic different story that's it for now <laughs> I, I think I, I, there's there's way more to be talked about there's no end to to what we we have to contribute when it comes to our experiences with narcissists, when it comes to our experiences during our childhood or during our relationships in dealing with them. It all uh, unravels somehow and it all, when it unravels, you find that one end ties into another end. They all, they're all connected in one way, shape or form. Unraveling all that and, and sorting through it and untangling all of it, uh, somehow I guess that's just my thing for me personally. <laughs> that's it. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, like and subscribe and don't forget to share.